Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all those who mother children and mother us and mother older people, everyone who mothers. Happy Mother's Day today. I wanted to let you know that after the children's message, there's going to be a very special gift to mothers. So don't miss it. It's a wonderful anthem, and Christine has many, many surprises for you in that video. So my friends, this is the first year that we haven't celebrated the anniversary of our capital campaign because it's all over. 20 some projects were completed. Praise God, we are truly blessed. So thank you for your generosity in that time. And here we are worshiping online. So I hope that you'll share it and like it and make comments throughout the service. We love to hear back from you. This past week has been wonderful. After Gary uh, preached for me last time, thank you very much, Gary. We have collected boxes and boxes of diapers. As a matter of fact, Zachary and Jacob Feldman went outside after church last week and took some of their toys and sold them. And that afternoon they dropped off a box of diapers because they knew other children needed them. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that what we want to teach our children? So continue to bring diapers in as, as you will for the Maker's Place in Trenton. Bring in food for the food pantry. And thank you all for writing notes to our teachers expressing your appreciation for their hard work. Continue to do that and also we'd love to send thank you notes to grocery store and delivery folks as well as lab techs and others who have been on the front lines but are more of the unsung heroes. So if you want to send me some names and addresses we'll make sure they get a special note of thanks. This week we've had our Bible study classes and our prayer devotional time. Our prayer time has been on Wednesdays at 5, and we're going to change that to 6 o'clock from now on. So Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. So my friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship together and sing how great is our God. Good morning, friends, and happy Sunday. I'm so glad you could be with us on this chilly but sunny Mother's Day morning. This morning's songs were chosen from the pool of mother grandmother favorites. So if at any time you hear a song that is or was a family favorite, or if it reminds you of someone special, hit that heart button right down there and write that person's name in the comments. And I will be sure to add those names to my personal prayer list. All right, we are beginning with Chris Tomlin's How Great Is Our God. So please join me, because I don't want to sing alone. <laughs> Here we go.
all will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Thank you. How great is our God. Will you join me in the call to worship? Let us rejoice in the God of our salvation, to whom we turn to in times of joy and times of sorrow. Help us, O God, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us. Let us not be afraid to be real and honest before God in the community of faith. For this is the house of love and hope. May all be welcome here, baggage, burdens, and all that we bring along with us. Restore us, O Lord. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Will you join me in the opening prayer? God of understanding, we gather together today as people who go, up, go through ups and downs in life. We confess that in difficult times, we often close ourselves off to you and to one another. May we turn to you in our need, confident in your ability to handle all we bring to you. Help us to be a supportive community to one another so that we may accept the present as we step into the future filled with your hope. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hear these words of assurance and pardon. We have an advocate with God in Jesus Christ who forgives us and restores us. We are called away from the path of sin into the path of hope and reconciliation. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Help us to invite others on the journey and step joyfully into this new season of learning and love in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And let's join together in one of our favorite hymns, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, verses 1 and 3. What a friend we have in Jesus. If this song is a favorite or if it reminds you of someone, I want you to like or hit that love button and put a name in the comments so that we can add that person's name to our prayer list. We're singing verses 1 and 3. the children will come close. I have a secret for you. You know, this is Mother's Day, and we want to thank all those who have been such good mothers to us. And sometimes it's our dad who mothers us, sometimes it's our grandparents who watch over us. But I have a secret idea for you. Here it is. I was thinking, why don't you write notes like this?
This is the one I'm writing for my mommy. She won't know about it at all. It says, Mom, I love you. And see down here, it says, I, like an I, love with a heart, you. And then I put my initial R for Reggie. Mom, I love you, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up like this. And I'm going to put it in a secret place where she can find it. And that's what I was thinking you could do this week. Why don't you make secret love notes and hide them around the house for your mom or maybe for your grandmother or your aunt, whoever you know loves you a whole bunch and surprise them with these wonderful notes to say thank you, okay? Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for the wonderful people that take such good care of us. Especially today, we think of our moms and we think of our grandmothers, but you know, our dads sometimes are the ones who mother us and our grandpas. Thank you for all those who love us and mother us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I'm Tyler Michigan, and uh, please join me in prayer. God of all life, we thank you for adopting us into your family through the miracle of baptism and for calling us to be brothers and sisters to each other through Jesus, the only Son of God. Today, loving Father, we pray for our mothers who cared for us when we were helpless, who comforted us when we were hurt, whose love we, and care we usually took for granted, as we often take your love for granted. Today, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of their mother, maybe even years after they were separated, those who never knew their biological mother, those who have experienced the wonder of an adopted mother's love, and the families separated in this pandemic. Lord, give them special blessings, keep us united with Christ, so that we can love in the way that he loves us and all people. We ask this for Jesus' sake, as we pray the way he taught us to pray. Our Father who art in, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Rosemary, and this week I will be reading the scripture, which is Ruth chapter 1, verses 11 through 21. Naomi's life has taken a tragic turn. Her husband and both her sons have died, leaving her with two beloved daughters-in-law. So now she is going back home to Judea. And we start on verse 11. Naomi replied, Turn back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Will there again be sons in my womb, that they would be husbands for you? Turn back, my daughters. Go, I am too old for a husband. If I were to say that I have hope, even if I have a husband tonight, and even more, if I were to bear sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you refrain from having a husband? No, my daughters. This is more bitter for me than for you, since the Lord's will has come out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so, if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. So both of them went along until they arrived at Bethlehem. When they arrived at Bethlehem, the whole town was excited on account of them, and the women of the town asked, Can this be Naomi? She replied to them, Don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara, for the Almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has returned me empty. Why would you call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me? and the Almighty has deemed me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a closer walk with thee. We're singing verses one and two. This was a favorite of my father's. <laughs>
want to thank God that we can walk a little closer with him. And that's our plea this morning, is that we do walk closer. One of the ways that we can do that is when we're in conversation with each other and when we grow together and we are mentored by others. So this morning, as, as part of our Mother's Day action, I would like you to text right now on Facebook or, or on your phone, name a woman who has been a spiritual mother to you, who has helped you in the faith, that has helped you to grow in the faith, and give thanks to God. So text it now or, or put it on comment on Facebook, and then later today, you send her a thank you note thanking her. And if she's in heaven, give thanks to God and make sure God tugs on her shoulder and says, hey, thank you. Also this morning, we want to pray for some special people. We want to pray for Courtney, who is Dee uh, LaMonica's granddaughter. And we also have some folks that have tested positive for COVID-19. Pearl, who's Betty Gapplegate's aunt. Marion, who's Barbara Shakoti's sister. And we want to pray for Gary and my family in Delaware, for some of them have been exposed to COVID. And we want to pray continually for the teachers and nurses. And we want to lift up this week those grocery store workers and delivery drivers and lab techs. And if you know some of those folks, please text them to me so that we can thank them as well. Let us go to the Lord. Lord God in heaven, we pray your blessing on all those we've named before you. Let them know that you are close and that nothing can separate them from your love. And be with us that we might share with each other and look out for each other and always be there for each other when we need to talk. And Lord, we thank you that we can come to you with that hope, that assurance that you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. As we start our message today, I want to ask you, have you noticed that you've had good days and rough days? I certainly have. There have been days when I can hardly move and I feel like I'm sleeping all day. And then I get ready to do something and something distracts me. I seem to be very distracted in trying to get work done. And when someone will say to you, how are you? Do you say, oh, I'm okay, without even thinking about it? Yeah. Do you believe what you just said? Or do you feel like nobody really wants to know? Or maybe as a Christian you feel like I should be okay because I'm a person of faith. Well, today's message reminds us that God gives us permission to not be okay. God gives us permission to not be okay. And that's okay. And it's Mother's Day. And it's a perfect day to remind all those who mother, who love and to care, that we need to take time for ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to make sure that we are well and healthy, and make sure we do those things which help us to cope. Let me ask you this. You know when you feel productive, with closet cleaning and with uh, cleaning out and organizing that kitchen junk drawer. But then again, you feel we feel alone, isolated from our social circles and family. Maybe there are just a few days where you feel listless or down or tired or sleeping more than you should. Or maybe you and I are working and Zooming from home all day long sitting in front of our computer. And then there are those days when we wake up as tired as we went to bed because we're just not sleeping well. Or maybe we're working away from home as one of our frontliners and our worry about being exposed to the virus makes every interaction an anxiety-ridden moment. And those moments are blending into a solid hyper day. And so you sanitize everything and you wear your mask everywhere and you wash your hands as if it were a ritual of life. Perhaps our days are filled with caring for our children and our parents and pressures of keeping everything moving forward. Class times and med schedules and homework and grocery shopping is draining your energy reserves fast and you feel overwhelmed as this quarantine continues. 
In those days of sadness and anxiety, sleeplessness, try to keep a schedule, keeping in touch with a, by calling a friend, monitoring your eating habits, ha, <laughs> exercising by going for a walk. But there are days when that's just not enough. Remember, it's okay to not be okay. If you continue in these patterns for too long, call your doctor, get help from a mental health specialist. There's nothing wrong with that. As Michelle Obama said, at the root of this dilemma is the way we view mental health in this country. Whether an illness affects your heart, your leg, or your brain, it's still an illness, and there is no distinction. We all handle these circumstances differently, and we realize that not all of us are in the same state of affairs. Some of us are quarantined with little effect, except that we can't eat out. Some are unemployed, waiting for the check to come, and our children are hungry, and for the first time, we have to ride over to the food pantry for food, and it's so hard on our spirits and our ego. Some, when the unemployment check comes, it's more than what we earn in a week. And we go, what? Some are watching our businesses struggle, just struggle to survive. Some are grieving loved ones. Some are fearful that there are those who are vulnerable and sick. Some are faced with an online world we never thought we'd have to figure out, and yet to see our families, we have to learn how to FaceTime or Zoom. And then we're even watching worship on YouTube or Facebook. Who knew that the world could change so much in such a short amount of time? And God says to us, yep, hard times could come. He doesn't say maybe. He doesn't say might. He says hard times will come. And maybe they are now here for you. I never promised you a rose garden, God said. I promised to be with you through it all. So what do we do? What do we do? We don't pretend that everything is okay. We don't pretend that everything is okay. We, like Naomi, as Rosemary so beautifully read, we name it. It has been said that a person can live for weeks without food, days without water, minutes without air, but it is impossible to live one second without hope. So there was a man and his wife, Naomi, and they had two sons, and they went to Moab to live because of the famine. And as noted before, Naomi's husband died, and then one son died, and then the other son died. Daughter-in-laws Ruth and Orpah were walking to Bethlehem from Moab with her, and Naomi is telling them that their best bet is to go back home to Moab and hope that someone will take them in. There was no social security or safety net back then. Naomi herself was hoping to go back to Bethlehem where she was from and maybe find someone who would take her in. Sadly, it was a time when women's identity was wrapped up in the men in their lives, their husbands, their fathers, their sons. And they were suffering because of the social struggle. And Naomi knows that they would have better luck finding someone in their hometown than in a foreign, different country like Judea. And especially if there were three of them, who could possibly take in three women? So she makes an emphatic and lengthy and quite clear demand for these two women to leave her and to go their separate ways. She even comes up with this absurd conclusion. Did you hear it? She says this, even if I thought there was any hope for me, even if I should have a husband this very night, some passing stranger who would be willing to hitch himself up to an old widow, fat chance, she says, and even if I should be able to bear some sons to this man, highly unlikely to say the least, would you two wait for my sons to grow up? How absurd is that logic? But that was the point where she was. Ruth refuses to leave her. Orpah sadly walks away. 
Yes. Ruth, in the deepest moment of devotion, has an unwillingness to let go of her in any circumstance. She says, do not force me to abandon you or turn back from following you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die and be buried. May Yahweh do anything at all to me and even more as well, if even death parts me from her, from you. Ruth is willing to give up everything, her life, her companionship, her nationality, her religion, her death, her burial, her future, everything that she is, has been, and will be. And Naomi shuts up and says, all right, you can go with me. Many times we used to read that years ago at every wedding, and I always thought it was strange because it is a daughter-in-law speaking to her mother-in-law. It's not a marriage between two who are starting a new life together. Well, let me tell you, Naomi's name means pleasant. But she was so unhappy, she was so not okay, that she chooses to change her name to Mara, which means bitter. She is declaring that she is not okay and that she's angry at God because she thinks he brought this upon her. But she doesn't turn away from God and she doesn't stop believing. She brings all those feelings to God in prayer. No one in the scriptures yells at her for being so honest with God or having such negativity. We don't read that. You know, years ago, I remember a retired pastor from our home church who was preaching. And he was describing a time when he was angry at God. And in the middle of his message, he said a most inappropriate word in describing his feeling toward God. That moment is etched in my mind because of the hard shocks and gasps that I heard from the congregation in the pews. He certainly got his point across. God can handle our anger as he does our sadness, our anxiety, and our worry. When we open up about our heartache, our darkest moments, that is when God can really heal us teach us, love on us, when we don't try to solve everything ourselves, but lean into the Lord Jesus Christ, our friend, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter. Christine found a beautiful song, but we had so many other beautiful songs today, we aren't sharing it, but it's called OK, and it was written by Josh Wilson and Jeff Pardo. I wanted to share those words with you. Bring your broken heart your secrets and your scars. You were never meant to carry all this weight. Let your walls come down and let the tears fall out and know that Jesus loves you just the same. It's okay to not be okay. This, this is where the healing starts. This is where the light can crush the dark. Here inside your pain, inside your doubts, here is where he's going to meet you now. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to not be okay. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, God said, my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. So I'll sp gladly spend my life bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. In other words, we are not to be defined by our tough circumstances or our negative feelings. We can go through Christ to, to be made perfect in love. It's okay not to be okay. God gives us room to be not okay, and he calls us together in the midst of our struggles. And so we call each other to touch base. We buy diapers for families who are struggling. We offer to go grocery shopping. We walk with each other through online connections that challenge us. We buy food. We write thank you notes to those who have given so much so that they know someone cares about what they are doing and thanking God for them. Why? because we are all beloved children of God, and God loves us. And so we love each other, and we love ourselves. Stay tuned. 
next week because next week you'll hear how Naomi experiences the grace of God and we learn that our frustrations, our challenges, while valid, do not have the final say over our lives. Amen and amen. In the Garden is on every mom and grandmother's top 10 favorite hymns. Um, including my grandmother, Helen Goddard. And she's been gone a while, but she did leave me her very special songbook. And I've opened it to In the Garden. I'm going to use this this morning in honor of her. We're singing verses one and two. My friends, thank you for your generosity to the church and to the ministries that we reach out and share the love of Christ. God calls us to this community of love and service. As we prepare to offer up our gifts, let us remember that God uses us to bless one another, even when we don't have it all figured out. This past week, the Stewardship Committee met, and we met to discuss the Norris Scholarship Fund. This year, we have a blessing the blessing is we have more students than ever graduating from high school that are church members who will be receiving the NARA scholarship. The challenge for us today is that we do not have the funds to cover that. Our scholarship funds come from the earned interest from our invested endowment fund. And so I think you can figure out what's happened with those earnings. So my friends, if you can support the NAR Scholarship Fund, that would be a wonderful thing. Thank you, thank you, amen. We wanna thank you so much for your generosity in giving and continuing to support uh, your church family. So today I wanted to remind you that there are three ways to give. One is to write a check and mail it snail mail to 23 Church Street, Manasquan, New Jersey, 08736. Or you can go to our website, www.manasquanumc.com, and look for the link that goes to Vanco, which is a secure online giving path. And there's another way. You can use Venmo, the app, and give through that avenue, Secure Giving, which is Manasquan UMC. Thank you again so much for your support.
Let us pray. God of compassion, we thank you for your steadfast love in times of both joy and despair. Bless our gifts to your service in the world that we might walk alongside those who are struggling, even as we ourselves sometimes struggle. May we know your gracious presence along the journey. In Jesus' name, we pray your blessing upon all our students. In his name we pray, amen and amen. And let's sing together one of our favorite, favorite hymns, How Great Thou Art. Here's our last fan favorite, How Great Thou Art. <clears throat>
Join me in the benediction. Breathe deep and take it in. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May the God of peace who raised Christ from the dead strengthen your inner being for every good work. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen and amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thank you for worshiping with us today and we hope that you'll be back next week and remember we're on Facebook and then after the service we will be posting it to YouTube underneath our church's name so my friends God bless you happy Mother's Day and this week grab a box of diapers and leave it on the porch at 23 Church Street Manasquan grab some extra food and leave it on the porch as well and remember that when we celebrate each other when we support each other that's the way in which we grow deeper in our faith this week devotion and prayer will be at six o'clock on Wednesdays Bible study at seven on Tuesdays and 9 a.m. on Wednesdays they will be zoom meetings so we're happy to invite you and get you set up with that so God bless you and go in the peace of Christ amen and amen <laughs>